Hey everybody, we're going to take a look at this Baofeng radio right here today. Originally, Radiogity sent me two of these, but we'll explain that story as we go to the bench, unbox this, and take a look at what we got. All right. We got to open it. And today we will be taking a look at the Baofeng model UB7B. There was actually two of these radios that were sent to me by Radioddy for review and evaluation, but this was during the time of the hurricane. Instead of just doing the review, I sent those two radios out with two people to go to Jamaica for hurricane relief efforts. Now, because those radios are out in Jamaica, I just ordered from Radioddy the same model that they wanted me to review. And uh, we're gonna take a look at it right now. There is something interesting that I noticed on the box. And I'll explain it to you so that you could tell me, as this video progresses, if they are the same radio. On the box where it says it's a model UV7B, under the barcode it says the SKU is UV17R+. And so I'd never seen a UV17R+, I'm sure a few of you have, but I think what the difference is between the video that I made on the UV17 is that there's added Bluetooth as well as tri-band capabilities. I ended up paying $46 for this nine of that or 10 of it was shipping. So around $36 for this device. And one of the interesting things though, is if I look up the FCC ID that's listed on the box, that FCC ID UV7B or 2AJGM UV7B, it actually just uh, doesn't exist. And so that FCC ID, as far as I could tell is not valid. And I wanna explain why this is important to you. First, if we take a look at the UV17R+, plus, the SKU is 715BA, UV17R plus dash A, and this one's a little bit different. So it's UV17R plus BTA. So basically the difference between the UV17R plus and the UV7B is going to be a smaller battery according to, we're gonna find out about the battery here, and then, of course, uh, we have added Bluetooth capability. So if you've seen a review video for the 17R Plus, this is essentially going to probably be the 17R Plus plus Bluetooth. Now, why is this all important? Well, there is two sides to this. Number one, people want to buy unlocked amateur radios like the ones that Radioddy are selling even if they're not legal to sell. And the reason for that is they like that ability to have GMRS, FRS, MERS, and basically have an open radio to be able to use whenever they need to or they want to. Again, that's not what I'm saying people should do, but you know, I am putting it out there that there is valid reasoning for it, such as hurricane relief. All of a the sudden, these radios go to Jamaica and they're unlocked so they could be utilized on the correct frequencies that may help them get the proper resources. And there's the other side of it too, which I believe is probably a moral side of things, right? People don't want to be deceived. They don't want to be lied. So when they see that there's an FCC ID on here and there's not really an FCC ID on here, and when they see that it's a UV7B and they think it's a new radio, but it's really just the UV17R plus plus Bluetooth, it could feel, and you might see here in just a few moments, as if you're being deceived. Let's go ahead here and take a look at the UV7B user manual. It looks like any standard Baofeng user manual, which uh, will get you started and will have information on how to do most of the basic operations, which we'll just kind of go through today without reading the user manual. Anyway, uh, there's enough information on here how to charge, you know, how to transmit, how to set your PTT, and at least you have some kind of user manual, which we'll leave it to the side. And one of the observations I made, much like the UV17, it looks like the battery, ooh, USB-C. It looks like the battery screws in. So we're going to put it down here and then we're going to get ourselves a flathead and screw it down. If you don't have a flathead, you could adapt. Thanks, Ham Radio Rookie. Ah, uh, you know what? We should probably find out about the battery and get an idea what it says that the rated battery is. We'll test it here in just a, a little bit. But I do like the fact that there's USB, probably C, to charge this. Yep, USB-C. Pretty awesome. Battery here says that it's a 1800 milliamp hour, 1 1.8 amp hour battery. I will tell you that it looks like we got the same antenna as we did with the UV-17. 
And for all you wondering, it's SMA male on the radio, which means your antenna, if you wanted to get an aftermarket one, would be SMA female. And in fact, Radiodity did send me a couple of different antennas. Let me show you. Perhaps they send me two other antennas because this is a tri-band radio being 2 meters, 70 centimeters, 1.25 meters, as well as airband. We have three different antennas now. One of them is going to be your standard VHF, UHF antenna, which does screw in fine. And then we have a, what is going to be a 108 through 136 megahertz antenna. This is going to be for our airband receive. And then we have another antenna, which is going to be for 1.25 meters. So yeah, you got it. This is a tri-band radio. If you did see my UV17R video, I believe it was, it has a really good audio sound. It's the same audio sound as that video, which is really cool. Uh, the problem that you will have, though, is being outdoors. This screen, if it's sunny outside, you won't be able to really see anything. Of course, right now you can't see anything as the timer is just a, a couple of seconds in it. It times out, but we could change all of that. I'm aware that it's not going to make a difference, but let's just go outside and see if the screen is any better than it was in the prior versions. Channel mode. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Not being able to see your screen outdoors is kind of a big deal if you're going to be utilizing these for like survival or like for outdoor use. Maybe you're climbing a mountain and you can always make do by covering it up, but it, it becomes a little inconvenient. So far, the radio seems to be just like a UV-17R. We also have this flashlight on the bottom, which, hey, the flashlight, not too bad. Cool. Now, I've also went ahead and installed the belt clip on the back of the radio. It's just held on by two Phillips head screws. Super easy to put on. And we also get a power brick as well as our USB-C cable, which allows us to plug into the back of the radio. And finally, we get two other accessories, a lanyard as well as a headset slash microphone. I'm going to set both of those to the side right now. I'm going to go charge up the battery and then we're going to discharge the battery to see if it is really 1.8 amp hours or 1800 milliamp hours. I suspect that that's not going to be an issue. We are now all charged up. When you have the USB plugged in to charge, a red light will appear. Once it goes green, the battery is fully charged. We're going to use our West Mountain Radio computer-based analyzer to analyze this battery. If cutoff voltage for a lithium-ion battery per cell is 3.1 volts roughly. And so I did the cutoff voltage at 6.2 volts. We started at 8.2 volts, and instead of getting 1.8 amp hours, we have about 1.15 amp hours, which is uh, definitely a little bit lower than expected. Hey everybody, next up we're going to go ahead and we're going to test the power output on the radio, both uh, VHF and UHF or 2 meters, 1.25 meters, and then 70 centimeters. After we get those power ratings, we could do our calculations to check the spectral purity. However, I just turned on the radio and it's in channel mode, which is fine. We'll switch it over to manual mode. And I thought it would be cool to showcase how great the manual was. And it says here, if you go to section 5.6, it's channel mode and channel selection. Even though I said I wasn't going to use the manual, I ended up feeling like I needed to use the manual. Now, this radio is advertised on the website as for beginners. It's, it's very easy to use. It's user-friendly. And the manual should be one of those things that's also user-friendly. But if we go to chapter 5, it actually ends at chapter 5.15. I searched the rest of the manual for another chapter five. Maybe there's two of them. If I were new and I didn't know where to look, it would be a little bit disappointing. I just held down the green button. No big deal. So now we're in frequency mode into our dummy load on high power. And got to switch it over to VHF on the actual meter. About 5.2 watts. Not bad. I think it's supposed to be a five watt radio. That's a very important number uh, that we need to have for VHF because when we calculate our spectral purity, we'll base it off of that. Uh, wow, actually 5.27 watts on 1.25 meters, which is actually pretty pretty good. And then let's go something like and about 3.38 watts. I do have a 1.1 to 1 standing wave ratio. And I do know that some of you kind of like to see it at different parts of the band, so... Actually, about 3.5 watts. So yeah, we're we're just right about in that range. 
now we should see if this radio is unlocked by a factory because, hey, if you're in an emergency, which this radio is kind of advertising as it is, it's nice to have a lot of frequencies. And that's what we ran into. Well, here. Now, I already know the answer to this because when we were getting ready to send these off to Jamaica, we put as many frequencies on here as we could. And so the question is, is the radio unlocked? And let's find out. Oops. About 2.3 watts. And you're probably asking about FRS as well. Uh, I mean, I mean MERS. One, five, two. Yeah, so this radio is unlocked. Let's go ahead now and run Spectral Purity and see how it looks on 2 meters, 1.25 meters, and even 70 centimeters. To conduct my testing, I'll be using a Regal DSA815. We go ahead and we just fade our screen to a video I did two years ago in 2023 on the UB17R we could see that the spectral purity isn't that great. So go ahead and pause the video real quick and leave a comment below. Do you think that the purity will be better or worse? Here we are on VHF and it looks about the same. Now I have proper attenuation for the amount of output power that there was being a mixture of internal attenuation on the Regal DSA 815 as well as the external attenuation. Here we are though on UHF and that doesn't look bad at all. UHF looks pretty good. And I'm kind of curious to know about how 1.25 meters looks. And 1.25 meters is not looking bad at all. So I'm really impressed with the fact that A, 1.25 meters is putting out more than a watt of power and B, it's not super dirty. You know, I'm not going to talk too much more about this radio, but I will tell you there's a thousand channels you could program into this radio. These thousand channels could be programmed over a series of 10 different memory banks or zones. So if we were to tap on the green button, which is the menu, we go over to the zone and we could, we could program things on the front panel. We could actually go down to wireless CPS. And if we had another radio, we could transfer our code plugs to the other radios. I did utilize Chirp to program this radio, or at least the two that we send to Jamaica, and they were fine. Uh, Chirp, I utilized the UV21 settings, and then, of course, there's also a cell phone app. Now, I tried to use the cell phone app, and it worked, but it was kind of not the best app in the world, and I have some trust issues. But there is Bluetooth on here, so you could utilize your phone to program this radio, and that is a feature that a lot of people like of course, with the USB-C USB as well. Now, I'm kind of curious. Oh, by the way, you could do narrow band or wide band. It would be nice, and I mentioned this in my UV-17 video two years ago as well, if we could actually change the screen display from uh, the dark color to maybe a more light color. And this would allow for uh, it to be more visually appealing maybe in the light. I do also want to mention that there is NOAA weather radio on this radio, which is nothing new. But you hold down zero, it brings you into the NOAA weather radio, and then you just got to find your local NOAA weather radio. DeKalb reported 26. Burlington, Wisconsin reported 27. Racine reported 28. Yeah, so that works fine to get out of there. All you have to do is hold down zero again, brings you back to the main menu. As I mentioned earlier, Air band receive is a capability with this radio receive only. And I utilize Chirp to program in multiple Jamaica area airports into a certain set of channels on the radio. What I would recommend is taking it a step further and putting all your air band stuff into a separate zone so that if you ever wanted to scan air band only, you could reference that zone. But it worked out pretty well. You could see I have towers, I have air traffic control. I have airport weather reporting, and those things were all very important while sending these down to Jamaica. Huh. Huh. Okay, here's... <laughs> this is a difficult one. So first of all, I do want to thank Radiodity for sending me these radios. Not because I got a free radio, but because we were able to, whether these radios had valid FCC ID or not, whether they were spectrally clear or not, we were able to send these off to a place where in a time of emergency, they actually needed to be utilized. So thank you, Radiodity, for that. And I think my conclusion at this point would basically be just that is, hey, are these radios the best radios in the world? They may or may not be, but in a time of need, you know, they're better than nothing. Can you find a better radio for roughly the same price? Absolutely. I think right now, 
There's the UV5R Mini, which is pretty much Bluetooth, and you could use the app. Uh, you'll have to do a little bit more research, but there are, in fact, leave a comment below, and why don't you all let us know, for the price of about 46 US dollars, are there any radios out there that you would recommend over this radio that you saw today? Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Hope you have a good one.